there's a lot you can do in this town You set it up and turn it around We might have come from somewhere else But this is where we found ourselves Welcome to the local show People you work with, people you Welcome to another edition of The Local Show here on Grassroots Community Network. Thanks for joining us this week, guys. I'm Eric Scarvin, your host. We are about to wrap our 19th winter season, guys, on The Local Show here in the month of April. So excited to bring in a friend of mine, first-time guest on the show. She is the chief unicorn and director of optimism for Windwalkers, <laughs> It's Gabrielle Greaves. Welcome to the show, Gabrielle. Nice to be here, finally. I got that title. I'm so excited. Yeah. I got your amazing title there, especially Chief Unicorn. Got the horn. Next time you got you got yeah, to get my horn on. Got to get that horn on. I will. <laughs> I got a few of them. Yeah, it's springtime. I mean, hey, Woo. we should all be getting our horn on. <laughs> anyway, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for Thanks being for here. Thanks for having me here. It's We're been really exciting to well, even just think that I was coming here today been excited well and thank you for the hat we're sporting yes. our, our wind walkers hats and we we're going to be getting into the the mission but i wanted to start with your background because your first appearance we want to get to know you a little bit okay. we're not going to go all the way back you know yeah don't do that 20 today. years ago when you were a kid <laughs> <laughs> well thank you when you were like you know a toddler yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but since you've been in the valley tell us a little bit about your work experience and in particular the things that led you to your your current uh, position with wind walkers. Well, ironically, you know, I've had a lot of different positions like anybody else in this valley. <laughs> um, and I've come and gone. You know, I, I was from New York and LA area and I've done else, um, lived elsewhere. But what the most important thing was I kept coming back. And this time when I got back, I stayed. Um, and with that, they had asked me out to wind walkers to be a volunteer. Oh. And so I started like a lot of us start on our staff. We start with our passion for the kids, for the horses, for our adults in this community, just a lot of community. And I just have really never left, Eric. Amazing. This was it. I've been here now for over the 13 years with a full dedication to Windwalkers. I never thought about coming its executive director. I did a little bit of, you know, giving them guidance. Um, kind of as a hired gun and got in there and spoke with their at the time board and then just recognized how much I loved what they were doing every aspect of them I mean who doesn't want to be with children yeah. with our adults with our community residents and with this magical creature called a horse you know like right. that's that's a therapist so for my background I have so many different kind of crazy stuff going on right I've, I've undergrad i've done international finance i've been in marketing wow. i now have a wellness counseling you know degree from cornell university you know all of it kind of wraps up which is really cool i've done equine specialist work from the side of the gala which is growth and learning techniques with equine assisted approaches you know and and you just keep going and what i've learned is i'm really really eager and hungry all the time to learn more because it's such an incredibly growing um, community and this kind of therapies and activities are just they've been going on for over you know I, I would say now it's been going on for over 54 years in our country however it's been going on since way back when <laughs> right because right. we've used rehabilitating with horses for even our veterans and our, uh, other approaches our you know our wartime heroes have used horses so you know, I, I can say that history is definitely built into this. Evidence-based research is based, you know, based in this. There's medical fields, our mental health communities, our wellness communities. So there's just so much going on. I mean, you could be a coach and coach with the horse. You could be a counselor and be there with the horses. You could be in mental health and be with the horses. So I say that my horses are everything from the teachers the doctors that are on staff, you know, part of the mental health treatment teams, and all of this is true. So who couldn't get excited for that? That's and a pretty amazing yeah. combination of ingredients there when you talk about community and helping people so deeply, you know, and 
and um, and then the horse aspect, which is just a magical creature and yes. a, a free spirit, and so it's really the combination. Is there like a for me like when I summarize like teaching cycling, for example, uh, there's a moment like that I live for. It's when I see someone light up, you know, and it, like when they do something or experiencing something for the first time. Say it's riding a mountain bike for the first time. Right. Do you have a moment like that that's just really kind of your your touchstone that is like this is what it's about? Like and it probably gives you a little bit of uh, so goosebumps. So I'm gonna say and, for uh, and and you know I cycle in my background, right? So um, and I have the bruises and the plates to tr- to truly say I do <laughs> have been there before. So saddle to saddle. Right, you just did a great analogy from being a cyclist, and so many of us cycle in this community. God bless, and you've really, you're that guy for me. <laughs> <laughs> you got me encouraged over 26 years ago. Oh, but um, such in a fun way, saddle for saddle, right? So the same kind of moment when you see that light up. You know that I call it like that Cheshire cat look, um, <laughs> that giddiness, the yeah. laughter, which is truly medicinal. Anyway, right? Like when yeah. I hear laughter coming from the indoor arenas or outside, I know we're getting what we need. They're getting what they need. Right. But it's also that sense of, like you said, like an aha moment. Like it's yeah. all come together. Mm-hmm. And whatever that feeling is for them, it's their feeling. I don't ever try to describe it. That's why we tell their stories. I'm here to be their storyteller, right? I'm, right. I'm telling them in another kind of narrative. But it's everyone who walks through the door has a story. And the laughter, the, um, the friendships, the peer-to-peer relationships, the human horse connection, like... I mean, you feel connected to your, your cycle when you're out there. You feel connected to the, the you know, outdoor environment. Yes. Well, that's everything we are. We have the outdoor environment in spades. That's where we're doing this. You know, we're conducting it. And that horse, like you said earlier, and behind the scenes, the warmth of the horse, the movement of the horse. Yes. So, I mean, I, I tell you, it happens sometimes off the horse, in the saddle, even when they're giving a treat at the end and they get like, you know, and you have this beautiful mouth, a, yeah, you know, grabbing soft, a kind treat. Of mouth of the horse. And the kids are just, oh, I did it. <laughs> you know, it's cute. And, and they, they become giddy. And, you know, like yeah. I, I, every day I could be exhausted. And I can see an adult or a child come in, and my adults are childlike, right? <laughs> and it keeps me kind of childlike. Yeah. I get real excited because I know something's happening for them, and the expressions, even for those that may not always give an expression, right? Maybe they don't have the availability, um, and that is true with different diagnoses. But just to see them kind of try and reach up or just hold the shoulder of a horse or hug a horse. I mean, hugging is big around my, my little center. <laughs> so <laughs> I love it. I, I, love it. I invite anybody, come up and hug a horse and see how you feel at the end of the day. You can see that body language and you can see it's special. And you can, that that's, at, that's at the essence it. of it. That's the yeah. core. All right, Gabrielle. Well, we got so much to get to. Yes, let's go. I'm going to get to the core of my one break of the show (laughs) to thank my underwriters for making these kinds of shows happen all winter long, paralleling the ski season, we like to say. (laughs) I do want to thank Haiti Children, Highlands Ale House. Hope you guys had fun last weekend at the Ale House. It was incredible. Klug Properties, Red Brick Center for the Arts, Paradise Bakery, Susie's Consignment Aspen, White River Overland, Sundog Athletics, and the Wheeler Opera House. We're going to go to, our, like I said, our only break. Our only break of the show, guys. It's two minutes. We're going to be back with Gabrielle and Windwalkers. There's opportunities for you guys, not only as volunteers, but some upcoming events. So don't go away. At the Wheeler Opera House, we set the stage for connections that create memories for our audiences, artists, and greater Aspen community. 
at the Wheeler Opera House, all are welcome. You're welcome to be a part of history. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. Want to live like a local? Help us reduce food waste, a major contributor to climate change. You can help in three simple ways. Plan menus carefully and only buy what you need. Collect unused scraps for compost. Buy ugly fruits and vegetables. Reduce, Reduce food, food waste. waste. Live, Live like, like a, a local. local. Red Brick Center for the Arts is Aspen's hub for creative activity, offering youth and adult art classes, gallery exhibitions, artist studios, and nonprofits. You can take a class, meet with artists, purchase art, and be a part of Aspen's art scene. More at redbrickaspen.com. Locally owned and operated and consistently voted number one for Opre Ski, Highlands Ale House is the local ski bar, serving delicious drinks and comfort food, including pizza, burgers, salads, bowls, and more. Located at the base of Aspen Highlands. Brought to you by Paradise Bakery and Gelateria, serving Aspen for 42 years. White River Overland specializes in camper van upfitting, catering to mountain outdoor enthusiasts. WRO's builds are purpose-driven to enhance skiing, cycling, camping, climbing, and river adventures. WRO is nestled in the White River National Forest in Aspen. Susie's Consignment in Aspen at 600 East Main. Same friendly faces, same great prices, and new items daily. See you at Susie's. Welcome to the local show. People you work with, people you know. Thanks for sticking with us this week on the local show, guys, featuring inspirational locals live from Aspen, Colorado, every Tuesday at 3.30 Mountain Standard Time. I've got Gabrielle Greaves. She is the chief unicorn and the director of optimism for Windwalkers. And Gabrielle, we've got a little video right from your website, windwalkers.org. And can you give us just a kind of a brief overview of this? We're going to see a clip of the video today. I love this video. It is a little bit longer, so I hope people will see the, they can go to the website go and see to the, see whole, it at the video. whole video. Yeah. Hang with it. But um, <laughs> it's really beautiful because it's about, um, in particular, about two women that have um, between the ages of 35 and 65. Um, one is ski instructor, one are teacher. Um, very different accidents in their life brought them to be uh, therapy, uh, excuse me, uh, dramatic brain injuries. Um, and so we don't really think like that. You, you know, a lot of people just look at me to say physical. We work in the physical body right. with physical um, injuries or diagnosis or, but that's really not the truth. We really have a very, very broad range. Um, and in it, you'll also see how many amazing horses and what they do and how they carry them. So, all right, yeah. let's check out the clip. Last February, I had a concussion um, and I still have symptoms, concussion symptoms. They said they could help me with things like um, memory issues and confusion and mental fog and that kind of thing. I didn't know anything about horses and I was terrified the first time I was with, um, hey buddy, there you go bud. When at first I couldn't even open my eyes because it was too much stimuli to have my eyes open so I could only, cl um, so they were guiding me while I was holding on um, and I could just feel the horse and then slowly I was able to like open my eyes and have the other stimulus come in um, and then be able to, um, to guide the horse. So I've come a long way. So it's just a wonderful little 
look, you know, at, at some you. of the work that you guys do, Gabrielle. And it's what was amazing is digging into the website and people really need to explore around is all the different aspects of how horses can help people. Right. And can you talk a little bit about that? Because it can't be anywhere from a, a child to a, a war veteran to, you know, people just needing like confidence to yeah. spinal cord injuries. So can you talk yeah. about kind of that broad spectrum that you can help? So you've already said two really beautiful things, which is, you know, even if you're a spinal cord injury, um, we work through lessening our spasticity in our muscles. We also lengthen our muscles so there's tonality that we can build. We can build our core muscle strength, um, you know, from being on the back of the horse and working with them. Then we can work with dramatic brain injuries, um, you know, those that are in post-traumatic stress. So you talk about your veterans and, and other populations. Um, Self-confidence, trust, right? Yeah. Trust. Huge. Yeah, and wouldn't you want to trust an animal that is as majestic and as large, some of them are 17 hand size, so they're pretty big, <laughs> um, and understand that they are nonverbal, non-judgmental. I think what we do yeah. as individuals, human nature is, we don't mean to sometimes, but we do judge each other. True. Before True. we even know each other. Yeah. A horse won't do this. But they can also read the emotion and they they let you know where you're standing. And it's a beautiful thing. So the benefits are from self awareness also, right? We're sitting in distance to each other. This is a comfortable space. Self-awareness and spatial issues that sometimes if we came too close, some of us like to get right up, right? Right, um, right. I'm Italian. I like to, you know, hug you. <laughs> um, and I have to remember to take a moment before approaching someone and ask for permission. <laughs> That's a great point. So there is just that unscripted understanding between a horse and a human, too, of really coming into their space and it's compromiso so may i have permission to approach right so there's so many beautiful things that we can talk about um, in what it does for the body what it does for the mind right um, that aspect of the psychological benefit and then the physical benefits and there's long, long list as you could imagine <laughs> right. to go home. And, and we already touched earlier in this about just that beautiful, uncontrolled laughters, having moments of recognition and being able to take that and go into the world with it. Building, as you said, confidence, independence, right? Who doesn't want any of those kind of things? You know what? It remarkably sounds like a dog, right? Our dogs sense so much about us right. and, and, and surprise us sometimes by how much they know or how much they're aware or they're by the door, you know, minutes before you arrive at home and all these kinds of things. It sounds like big, a lot of crossover with, with the <laughs> yeah, like big, Just call them big, big dogs. dogs. I do. Seven, uh, what is it? 17 hand high doggies. <laughs> That's my tallest. <laughs> Down Rover. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, how about a story like, um, actually, I want to talk about something else. The horses, because the horses have backgrounds too. Yes, they do. And some of the horses may have trauma or different challenges or things they can you talk about kind of the horse perspective because it, it's not all about helping people it's about helping horse it's like a synergy right and it is everyone certainly kinda wins. all that um you've got a lot of um i'm gonna say older horses coming into what they do here for this therapeutic riding center called wind walkers um, and sometimes it's a second or third job for them they're either being retired from classically, you know, the jumping arena. Right. They're being try, you know, they're being retired from, you know, cutting or sorting, working cows, you know, being at the rodeos um, and roping, and you know, you've got horses that have been, you know, barrel racers that are of a different age, and so they may be retiring from one classic sense of being an athlete right. to now coming into being a therapy horse and and you're right sometimes that comes with them being already we call it sometimes serviceably sound 
um, which is a beautiful thing because there are a lot of walk trots still out there. Some of them are still walk trot canners, but they may have need some rehabilitation themselves to strengthen their muscle tone. Um, they may have some disorders that we're working through later on in their lives, just like us. <laughs> just like us, you know, I, I'm I'm not running at the same pace. I'm right. not. I'm walking. <laughs> I can I can I'm relate. walking at this stage of my life, so it's okay. You're not going to throw me out, right? Like you're yeah. going to invite me on to go snowshoeing, yeah. but you're not going to invite me to do the America's uphill anymore, right? Like, right, right. so I'm not that athlete. But I have had background, and so do they have background. So they have been athletes. A lot of them have been beautiful athletes. I mean, I think we even sent you a picture of one of my now thoroughbreds that's coming into the program who just over the past year has been retired from being a meter jumper. And so that's almost four, four feet high. Let's, wow. let's just round it up, right? I'm rounding up. But um, <laughs> the beautiful nature of this is he's going to service. He can be a walk truck canner horse for some of my independent riders. And that means people on the spectrum too. So there's a lot of beauty in all of this, yeah. and he's getting a second and third life. He's loving his job right now. He's, you know, he's going through his trials, and most likely will make it through. Um, but you know, when you see them in their former lives to then the now life, they're not just taking care of even just one rider; they're taking care of hundreds, literally hundreds, Eric, a year, and they're being touched daily from more than one pair of hands. And it is amazing to see them go from one aspect of their life to now something else. And it can be, you know, like I've even done this with, you know, Kate McBride rehabilitated some sure. of my horses and then brought yeah. them back to my facility and then started them in the program. Yeah, we had Kate on the show, actually. We talked about some of the uh, modalities. She was yeah. actually rehabbing horses and injured horses yeah. and things like that. And, and it takes look, a community to do it all. And sometimes people are looking for another career or another opportunity or another job or a volunteer position. Can you talk about the volunteer positions oh. and opportunities you guys have to volunteer? Absolutely critical positions. Um, there are horse handlers, there are side walkers, there's barn chores, so we call them barn buddies. And that means, <laughs> yeah, sweeping our barn aisles, mucking manure every day, sometimes twice a day, um, <laughs> keeping the facility clean, working with us in our offices, working through special events. I mean, who doesn't want to do like a special event and hang out, right? Yeah. For a night doing auctions. I mean, how many of us have, I volunteer every year for at least another two, three organizations that are our community partners. Right. And I love it. It gives me an opportunity to give back to them. They bring students to us. I would say that about Aspen Youth Center, the Aspen Hope Centers, you know, headquarters now, which is formally, you know, a different name, but um. There's just the buddy programs. I mean, Lindsay and I, when she calls me to volunteer, I will volunteer. We are all community partners. Um, they bring their children and adults down to us. We do the work with them. I will, you know, we all do, do different kinds of volunteer work in this community. And if it means even soaping a saddle, <laughs> this is what we do, right? Like, right. there's all different aspects of it. But I, I love the interaction of this community. It makes it really critical because holding and supporting someone in the saddle sometimes means three-man teams. Wow. I've got a horse handler and two people on the sides. Sure. And that is beautiful because they feel secured. They feel well taken care of. There's a lot of opportunity for this. And imagine if I have five individuals in for one session, do the math. That's 15 volunteers, then an additional instructor, sure. and probably another employee for safety purposes. So we have 17 people for five individuals. Wow. Yeah. So you really session. need those five teams in that case. We need and it, a lot. We're getting of down on time here, and I want to make sure to hit on this because yeah. you had mentioned special events. You guys have a Kentucky Derby watch party coming up. We do. And yeah. can you tell people a little bit that's on uh, May 4th? May 4th. It's a Saturday. Um, it starts at 2. It goes till 6. It's at Springs Creek Ranch down in Carbondale. A lot of people know that area. Nice. Um, bring out your derby hats, gentlemen. Put on your ties. That's the day. And your yeah. vest. It's a real fun. It's, it's like the 
classic two minutes in sports. You know, yeah, if yeah. you sneeze, you probably miss how fast that works. <laughs> it's about right. the build up yeah. and the but social. But it's about the fun. It's about yeah. the social. It's about, you know, really, you know, benefiting windwalkers. It's a community event. Again, everything's born on how to do things with our community and bringing each other together in this social environment. And it's just been going on for a number of years, so that's really great. But I want to bring fun. back something if we can. Sure, yeah, we got a minute. You have your own story. You have your own story. Yeah. So my uh, stepmom, um, her name is Candy, and uh, my dad was lucky enough to marry his uh, college sweetie Sweetheart. later in life. Yeah. And um, my mom had passed, you know, quite early in her life. But anyway, she had chronic fibromyalgia. She was being treated with morphine. I mean, that's how the Pain yeah. was so bad. She was bedridden pretty much 24-7, but getting on a horse was her magic. Yeah. And when she'd come out to visit with my dad, he'd Yeah, be, she would get on a horse. He'd get on a horse, and we'd go ride around the yeah. monastery in Old Snow Mass. And, and so I'd know in my own firsthand experience how magical, magical that was. Is. And uh, being on a horse for her was everything. I mean, and, and just to see her light up like a light yeah. bulb when she got up on that horse was magical. So I've... I've been a part yeah. of that, kind of that, a little bit of that experience and that magic. But that's what it's makes beautiful. it. It's beautiful. It's transforming. And it is even for my adults that later on need this, right? Yeah. And want to go back to something that's always been. <gasps> well, Gabrielle, you've made it through this grueling test of conversation. <laughs> I baked you. This is the new batch. Tro organic chocolate chunk and cranberry. Okay, you so know you this know isn't how... going home with me. This is going to be eaten in the car. <laughs> hey, you allocate. You're, <laughs> you're the chief unicorn and director of optimism. So I'll Thank let you, you delegate, allocate, or just allocate uh, them into your mouth. But did you have fun on the show today? I did. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for being Thank here. Thank you for everything. Thank you for all you do yeah. for our community. Windwalkers.org, guys, for more. And thanks for watching this week on The Local Show. At the Wheeler Opera House, we set the stage for connections that create memories for our audiences, artists, and greater Aspen community. At the Wheeler Opera House, all are welcome. You're welcome to be a part of history. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. Join the string beans in helping reduce food waste in our community. Plan menus carefully and only buy what you need. Collect unused scraps for compost. Ask for smaller portions in restaurants. Take home leftovers to eat later. Donate unopened food to our food bank. Let's work in concert to reduce food waste. Sundog Athletics, Aspen's Adventure Sports School and snowshoeing specialists since 1996. Welcome to the